Well, as you can see here, this is the problem we've got. There's all creamy stuff coming out of the prop, dripping on the floor. It's gearbox oil, you can smell it. There is also a little bit of it around the prop right there, look. In a lot of cases, you people wouldn't notice this because their boat is moored. This boat is obviously trailered, so I've noticed this substance dripping out. So it's a sign that the gearbox seals have gone. Basically, you've got to pull the prop off, you take this part off, and then it pulls out. Inside there, you've got bearings, you've got seals, you've got all sorts. So what I'm going to do is get this gearbox all drained, which I'm expecting to look like this, and start pulling it apart. I haven't got the, the parts yet, the parts are on the way. So I'm trying to skip ahead a bit, get it pulled apart and get it ready for the new parts just to get back in the water as quick as possible. And this one does really need a new propeller as well. It's a bit damaged on the edges here and there so we're more than likely to be getting a new prop for it very soon. Well let's drain the oil first and then start pulling it apart. We've just pulled the bottom screw out as you can see inside there. It's looking very creamy. What I'm going to do now is tilt the engine back down all the way and we'll undo the all level screw right up here. When we undo this, this should start flowing out. So we'll drop the engine back down. I'll show you the best way to get these undone without stripping the head and we'll get it drained out. Well, like I was just saying, we've got this set onto the left. It'll go into there. We'll give it a short, sharp tap with a hammer. And as you've seen, that screw turned then. Now, it'll be loose enough to do it with a screwdriver look. As I undo this, that oil is probably going to start coming out the bottom. Yeah, it's thick and gloopy. What's coming out the bottom, it's horrible. I'll show you now. That's a sign that your seals have gone. And you basically, your gearbox is full of salt water and it's solidified with the oil. Absolutely horrible stuff. So if you drain your gearbox and you're finding this, there's a very high chance that the seals have gone behind your propeller, inside here somewhere. So. That is what you end up with. What I'm doing here is getting some 10W30 engine oil. Just from my car, basically, a bit of spare engine oil. I'm gonna pump it through this gearbox and try and push out as much of this cream as I can. As you can see, I've got the Quicksilver gear lube pump here. So I'm gonna put it into there, keep pumping, and try and get out as much of this cream as possible. Just before I strip it, just to keep all the mess in the bucket. That's the stuff I'm using, nothing special. Just a bit of spare oil in a tub, nice clean oil. It's a bit of 5W30, so it's pretty thin. So hopefully it'll help to flush out a lot of this. I'll pump it through now, and let's just see how much it pushes out. I'm going to start pumping it through now. Yeah, it's starting to push it through. As you can see. What I might potentially do here is fill this gearbox up with 10W30 engine oil, run the engine on the driveway and put it in gear, just to circulate a little bit of oil around the box, just to try and get as much cream out of there as possible. Well, this should help to get the worst of it out, and then when we pull this assembly out, we can clean the rest of it. But yeah, just wanted to show you that little step, just to try and flush out a bit of the crap. What you want to try and do is get this pin as straight as possible. Makes it a lot easier to pull out. You will bend it up and you will damage that pin. You will need to fit a new pin. Now we've pulled that split pin out, we need to undo this castle nut on the end. The castle nut is 19 millimetres. When you're trying to do this, the prop wants to spin. So what I'm going to do is get a piece of wood where my hand is here on the prop to stop it spinning. Just be careful of your anode. You can remove this if you want to. I've got a piece of 4x1. I'm going to slide it up the back here and rest it on the prop. Just like that. Really, with tools, you shouldn't be using a ratchet to crack a nut. As tight as this you should be using a breaker bar you'll damage the teeth in your ratchet now i'm going to pull down slowly watching i'm not damaging anything it's not on the anode i don't want to bend this either so we'll go slow i 
and there we go it's just released just like that I hadn't touched this before so obviously this don't need to be that tight that's why that split pins there probably so we've got the castle nut which has come off first then we've got a washer lay these on the floor in order so you don't get mixed up what goes where this prop <coughs> should come off now yeah that prop comes off there and now we've got access to the two bolts top and bottom what I'm hoping is as soon as we undo these bolts you got a little gap here where you can pry with a screwdriver and you've also got one at the bottom I'm hoping this unit comes out okay some do get corroded and get stuck in there so fingers crossed because this is a fairly new engine 2014 we won't have that issue but we are about to find out make sure you got no more parts wanting to come off like this here look we'll put it in order down below the size of these two nuts is 10 millimeters using the breaker bar again we'll crack these off they're not tight as you can see these haven't been touched yet they're not tight at all but yeah you keep your ratchets in good health if you use it this way You see a lot of people getting on a solid bolt and standing on ratchets and hitting the ratchet with an hammer. They're not designed for cracking nuts loose. That's what breaker bars are for. These are designed for doing what this is doing right now. Backing the nuts out and backing the nuts in. Then to tighten them, technically you should use a torque wrench. To loosen them, you should use a breaker bar. Little nuts like this, you'd be fine just using a ratchet to be fair. They're not that tight. When you get nuts on there, like the castle nuts and stuff, that's when you need to use a breaker bar. Now, the moment of truth. How easily is this going to come off? It's coming off alright. When you pry on this, don't go hard, don't go crazy. Just go slow. But look at this. That is absolutely perfect. I'm really happy about that. Comes straight out, look. You can see all the gunk on there. We've got an O-ring right here. Right there we've got one, so that needs, I'll be replacing that. We've also got the oil seals in there. What we'll do is push this shaft out. And we'll place it back inside there for now. So we don't get damaged or dropped anywhere. Inside there, we've got an oil seal there. There's a bearing deeper. You can see there, look, that oil seal's chewed up. Get my screwdriver, try and show you, right there. It's chewed up right there. So th this is the one that's failed. So yeah, that's what's caused the ingress of water. This one, this oil seal. There is a bearing inside there as well. But we'll get all this cleaned up, wait for these parts to arrive, and we'll get all the new parts fitted. Obviously, I'm going to have to give it a good clean inside there. I will give you a quick look. It's actually quite bad in there. It may be flashing a little, Look a bit weird on the image because I've got a torch on. But yeah, you can see in the back of there, absolutely full of gunk and crap. So we need to get all this cleaned out. I'll probably give it a very good spray with brake cleaner. Just try and loosen it up, break it up and get it all out of there. Then I might give it a light coat of WD-40 to stop anything rusting while it's left open waiting for these parts to arrive. Let's get this cleaned out then. I'll show you on this part and you'll see how it breaks it up. See? Brake cleaner hits it and it just dissolves it. Brake cleaner is a really good thing for this and it evaporates after. But that is just coming off without even touching it. As you can see right there, it's nice and clean. Well, the all seal kit has arrived now. This is a couple of days later from that last part of the video, so I'm adding this on. Um, that is the all seal that I need. This one is for the upper shaft. There's a few O-rings and stuff in there, impeller gasket for the impeller housing. A few new crush washers there, like um, fibre washers, not crush washers. These are fibre washers for your um, oil drain screw and the one at the top. There's a few different bits, but we only need this at the moment. So I'm going to replace this. Hopefully that is the only issue and that'll be it. I'll show you how you change this now on the prop carrier. Well, as you can see, this is the oil seal right inside here. That oil seal needs to come out. So what I've got here is a punch, so if you can see that there. So I'm going to flip this prop carrier over and I'm going to try and tap this seal out from the other, other way. So we're going to flip this over this way. 
go in, get it on the back of the seal at an angle and give it a few taps with a hammer and hopefully it'll pop out. You need to go careful when you do this. You don't want to be damaging stuff inside here or scratching surfaces. Well, we've managed to get this oil seal out. It was an absolute nightmare. It did not want to come out. Um, basically, behind the oil seal, it's all got corrosion built up. Look, maybe you can see it around the edges of it there, all the way around. And you can see, I've had to literally destroy this to get it out. I've had to bend it all, fold it all. It looks like, to me, someone else has attempted this job more than once before, because there's damage in a few areas. There's damage there. As you turn around, there's more damage in a few different spots. There's about three areas which have been flattened and scratched inside here. So it is not going to seal properly over time. So it looks like I have to get a new prop carrier. I have to get a new one of these from somewhere. But for now, because I want to get out in the morning at half six for the bus, I am going to put this other oil seal in and we're going to see how it lasts. It might last a year, it might not, but I've got no idea. So we'll get the new oil seal in now, get it all put back together. Fingers crossed, that'll be it. I'm also going to be changing this o-ring at the back right there but yeah I'll show you putting the new seal in now this o-ring is simple I can show you that right now it'll just pop off add a little bit of grease to it for the new one so that's it that's it off we'll add a little bit of grease to the new one and we'll chuck the new one back in and just give this a little clean inside here but that's it yeah we'll get the new oil seal in here now right right here we've got the new oil seal it needs to go in with this face up. If you look, that side is like concaved and drops in. If you flip it over, it looks different. It looks more built up. So when you put this back in, it goes back in that way, just like that. What I've got here is a bit of waterproof grease. So what I'm going to do, put a tiny little bit of grease around the edge of this, just to help it go back in. This won't affect it. But as it's dry rubber, you don't want to be damaging it. You don't need loads, just a little smearing right around it all and the same on the inside for when the shaft goes back in after so yeah that's like that then we're going to put it into place into there i'm going to use a socket from my socket set to drive it in i do have a bearing driver kit but i don't have a bearing driver plate small enough for this so that's going to be placed back in there right there we've got a socket here which is a 21 mil which sits right around the edge of that seal look you don't want it sitting on the inside of the seal and you don't want it sitting too far out because you'll damage this face so that will fit perfect right there and we'll tap it gently and get it back into place as you can see there the new oil seal is seated perfectly so what we're going to do is get the o-ring on the back and then get all this fitted back in the gearbox there's no point me showing you the fitting back in the gearbox because it's exactly the same as removing it you've just got them two bolts which push in but i showed you the removal anyway it's late now it's probably about 11 p.m I'm trying to be quick so I want to get out on the bass in the morning at 6.30. So we're going to get this chucked back in. But that's it. That's how you replace the oil seal on the lower leg. The last little job now is to put this o-ring back on. What I've done is put a bit of grease around this whole o-ring like this. Just to help it slip back into place. When you put it back on, you don't want it twisting on itself. So if you put it back on just like that, it is going to start rolling. Rolling this part and twisting it. So you want to gently sort of stretch it around without rolling it. Just like that. That is not rolled. There's a bit of grease around it for seating it back in. And I'm going to put a tiny bit of grease just around this face. It just saves the rubber getting split and stuff when you put it back in. But yeah, we get some grease around there. That'll be fine. There's a little smear on there, there is. So this is ready to be fitted back onto the bottom.